This Meet Your Makers take on Fnatic. Azia instantly off the table, as is Ari. Huni has traditionally paired up with Rainover to phenomenal success when he's playing a damaged top laner. Let's see what he can get his hands on in today's games. Both teams really taking their time. Makers, of course, still looking to regain that synergy that they lost from Corey yeah. leaving the team and rejoining the team. They're just looking to find a play style, to be honest, because when we see MYM play right now, it's it's all focused on individual performance. You need someone to do one of the landing phase, and maybe he's able to snowball the entire early mid game for you and try to kind of get you into late game team fights. The one win we did see MYM, MYM pick up was actually against Copenhagen Wolves, where Mimer was playing Aurelia and did a very, very good job at actually looking for the right team fights. That was, of course, with Bleaser back in week two. And now, Corey, he came back last week. He was camped actually every single game. He was completely shut down by the enemy mid lane and jungler. And therefore, he didn't have any impact at all. Very interesting to see Na taken off the table, mostly because Huni's Na left a lot to be desired when it came to his ultimates. I think he had mechanical proficiency, hopping and skipping in Mini and Mega Na. But the problem he had when Fnatic lost their game to the Unicorns of Love, Huni never hit targets into walls. He just yeah. never got those Nars as and where he needed to. Notice what Fnatic is doing here, banning all the mid laners against Corey and also setting up a LeBlanc pick for Febivan. You have the Zed out of there, which is a good matchup into LeBlanc. We have the Kassadin, who is a counter pick as well. So they're really setting up for LeBlanc for themselves. And I don't know, I quite like this assignment of first pick actually from MYM. You need some way of forcing team fights. So your way to play right now is win laning phase and completely snowball in mid game advantage. Don't try and go full late game. Your shot calling and your synergy is not there compared to the likes of Fnatic, we would expect at least. So I think Alessandro is a good flex pick as well. Can be locked in for Corey as well. So we might see them add a, a combo here where Horo and whoever's playing that Alessandro can run together, give a Horo maybe a Jarman pick, and try and really get some ganks going. Well, we need to see if that works out. Fnatic with a couple seconds on the clock. They have not paired Rengar with any other top laner except Lissandra in the past, and they've comboed it with Zerath in Zerath. week one and do a very good job. So Febivin going back to the comfort pick of that Zerath. He's had a great job in the past, as again, it was part of a trio. Yeah. Zerath, Rengar, Lissandra. Lissandra's not available. Right. Another piece to that puzzle was always Sivir being the AD carry. When they played Rengar, they would do Sivir, Rengar, and Zerath as well. So you would use that Sivir ulti to get great positioning in team fights through the Zeref. And that's why MYM is taking it away. And that's really, really smart by them. Knowing that Fnatic loves to add in that utility AD carry. And we actually had a tweet earlier today. It was read on the analyst desk about Steelback being underrated currently in the EU LCS. Honestly, I don't think he's underrated at all. I actually think he's maybe slightly overrated because his <laughs> performance has been mainly on Sivir, which is a utility AD carry, which fits him perfectly because he can kind of start slow and just assist his team and this very aggressive playstyle we always see from Fnatic through the Sivir. We haven't really seen him shine on an individual uh, performance so far. It's always been utility focused and helping out his team. He's actually been losing laning phases two and two, so that should be what MYM also can look for. Deficio laying down the law pressure on Steelback. So let's just be perform. real. When you, when you say a player is overrated, it doesn't mean he's bad. He can still be a top 80 carry. He might not just be on the forgiven level just yet. You can still be overrated there. I, I think the clarification is fair. And I'm very interested to see how Steelback performs. Siv has taken away, as you've highlighted. Meet your makers got the heavy, heavy makings of a pick scenario. Movement speed from Siva, engage from Lissandra and Leona. The tools are there to make yeah. plays happen. Let's see how Fnatic respond. And again, we're banning that Annie and taking Leona for Nisbet. They try and remove the engage support from Yellowstar. He's been the main engage every single time he's been on either Annie or Leona. So they take that away. And again, you take the Sivir away. So, so far, I actually quite like the pick and man phase from MYM. But Fnatic are still running this very, very strong team fight. A lot of AoE damage coming down, but a lot of magic damage here. Again, Rumble, Zerath. 
and obviously Corky, which is mixed between the magic and physical damage. That means for MYM, early lock it on a Java and stack some magic with just Abyssal Scepter coming in, obviously, for your Lissandra as well. And it's gonna be it's actually gonna be pretty hard for Fnatic then to take down targets too far fast. Oh, you're gonna have a lot of wave clear on the side of Meteor Makers, which I think will be important because Fnatic have got a theoretical powerhouse when it comes to pushing towers down in the mid lane. With all of that poke in long range, Jarvan and Jace, Meteor Maker's got a well-rounded collection of damage and poke and wave clear, and they have all of the engage that they could want. So as you've already said, Deficio, Meteor Maker's with a strong pick and ban phase. Fnatic gonna look to finalize their team comp. Do they want to disengage with Janna? Do they want the engage and disengage with Alistair? Going disengage. The answer's gonna be Janna. I think that's intelligent. Monsoon will also help against any potential poker Jace can put down. That's your team comps. Yeah, you could have done, obviously, Alistar as a direct counter to the Leona here, but Janna is just such a top pick. And once again, falling through the pick and ban phase for Yellowstar now. So very, very strong team fight comps. Actually, two very strong team fight comps here from both sides. One of them, however, from Fnatic is more focused on being able to disengage a little bit, have that long range poke through a Zerif and a Cork. If you know that mid game spike, they get use it, group up early put down the Rumble ulti behind the tower, and then you just take it when MYM is forced to back away. But there's so much engaged on the side of MYM. If they do well in the laning phase, they can force team fights and prevent Fnatic from ever grouping up and landing down any poke, because then they're simply going to get engaged on. And Janna in, in herself is not going to be enough to disengage that through Lissandra coming in, Jarvan Catalyst, and we keep talking about how that's going to lock Janna in place, despite knocking him away. And obviously, the Leona with the long range ulti. The build-up of today, Rainover said that in the loss to the Unicorns of Love, they learned a lot and Fnatic will never repeat the same mistakes again. They've got a team composition that cannot afford mistakes because Meet Your Makers have got so many tools to engage in them. You're about to see those team comps. Let's see how much Fnatic have learned since their loss last week. You guys know the deal. Hashtag MYM win. Hashtag FNC win. The audience is super excited for this one. These Meteor Makers look to claw their way back up from the bottom of the standings. And Fnatic, they look to stay as close to SK as they can. Yes, indeed. Was SK still undefeated. Fnatic only lost to Unicorns of Love last week, which more or less came down to them misplaying team fights, and the Unicorns managed to take the win for themselves. But honestly, MYM here, again, strong pick and ban phase. They had the same last week, lost anyway in their situation. And one of the first times we see Jace in a long time, here in Europe at least, picked into this Zerif. So very uh, farm-focused laning phase, but it does add in quite a lot of poke. Suddenly from MYM just through Corey and also some all-in potential. Normally you don't see Jason all-in comps, however, but because he has that gate and you provide that together with the Civil ulti, there's so much mobility for the entire team then to go in and out. And you don't also associate Corey with Jace play. It's not something that he has played all too often. It's a lot more calculated, albeit you've got all that execution in the hammer form. So let's see how far Corey wants to jump into the team fights. And of course, how well he's gonna perform. He played his first two games, with the squad last week. Meet your makers still looking really to stabilize all of the off-rift drama. And it is something that has affected their gameplay. Let's see if this week yeah. of practice works out because their pick and ban phase has been very, very strong. Same for last week here. So Yamato Cannon, the coach, doing some work together with his players. And he actually tweeted earlier this week that it's very important that everyone remembers that these players, they need your support. Whatever's happening behind the scenes, it's not due to these players itself here. They really want your support. Well, we'll have to see if they can earn it. Mr. Riles and Nisbet, gonna recall up in this top lane. We do see Steelback and Yellowstar, in theory, gonna set themselves up for a lane swap. Yellowstar currently helping out Huni in the jungle. Rainover going to be on one of his stronger jungle picks that he's performed on this split. So again here, Fnatic really likes to lane swap, despite having actually a good 2-2 two two lane with their Corky Janna into Severe Leona. 
we don't see them too, too very often. And honestly, I still feel like this is because as a dual lane, they don't feel confident enough. And they actually prefer playing around in swaps, trying to get the lead that way. Get a tower down early as well to open up the map a little bit. And then you can start grouping after the laning phase and create these picks here. But there's some new things for Fnatic. This is one of the first times we see a Rengar pick with no additional speed ups to help rain over on the Rengar. Normally, they always paired again with the Severe. This time around, Janna move speed is all he has to help him. And also, Zerath Zerath was, Zerath was picked. First rotation by Fnatic. Despite them banning everything, they could actually count on LeBlanc. They felt confident enough taking this as a blind pick, something that has really backfired, especially over in Korea. Yeah, we'll have to see if Febovin can make it work in his regard. And I know I was obsessing over Rengar plus move speed last week. Shook made me sit down and shut right up because he demonstrated there's definite opportunities for ganking. As long as you've got that CC combo from your solo laners. Febovin, if you can get a stun down, obviously, it's going to make it easier. We do see Mima and Horo setting themselves up for a potential dive, but Yellow Stars had decent vision. Who needs decided to stick around? This is going to not work out for him. There's four members of Beat Your Makers. Who has been caught? The shield comes out. Damage onto Nisbet. One more turret shot. He's going to go down. Who makes it work. He is still alive. They've managed to trade two for one. Mr. Rolls forced a flash. And that just went horribly wrong for Meet Your Makers. Okay. I'm actually a little bit sad we didn't get to talk about this lane swap more before all this happened here. First of all, MYM doing a very greedy dive where they're actually waiting a long time. Hoon is already level three, one from the camp and one from the farm in the lane itself. So he's very hard to take down. Remember, he has a Dawn shield. Nisbet didn't try and flash away from this turret either. Has flash ready. Two kills now for Fnatic and completely turning that dive around here. When you're against Rumble, because he's starting Dawn shield, that makes him fairly tanky, making it risky to dive him. So either you do a short jungle clear, you don't do the skull crab or anything, and you go straight to try and dive him 4v1 when he's level 2. If you can't do that, you should just freeze the lane from the start against the Rumble. He has a hard time picking up a lot of farm. He only has the harpoons to get the farm itself. So you can actually deny him quite a lot with a Leona sitting in a bush. Don't try and dive, just freeze the wave at level 1 and make sure he doesn't pick up too much farm so he gets these magic penetration items early. This dive was very, very risky, and we saw the exact same thing happen in NA last week, where you dive a rumble. When he hits level 3, he has the Dawn Shield, and it's so hard to do because he gets so tanked. And obviously, also, Yellowstar was even there. Yeah, Yellowstar, with that Eye of the Storm and Exhaust, just giving Huni a couple extra seconds to get damage down. Nico Makers with a very poorly executed dive. Two to one. It was both of the top laners securing those last hits. Rainova about to meet Horo in the jungle. Last week we actually saw the video feature of the four Korean players that have moved over to EU to play. Horo and Rainova, two junglers. They were buddy buddy then, they can't be buddy buddy today. Steelback, 44 CS. He's got an advantage over Mr. Rolls, thanks in part to that botched yeah. dive. Perfect start, basically, for Fnatic, punishing MYM for the slow dive in the bottom lane. Oh, Febovin with the stun. Right of the Arcane comes out. He's three for three. And Corey's going to be forced backwards. We do see Rainover putting some damage down onto Horror, but that was a, a great uh, setup from Febovin, just to get some lane presence and pressure on this flash heal Jace. And with Steelback being alone in the lane, from level one, Yellowstar very early recall to go help Huni, expect and dive again. If you see the enemy slow building up the wave in a lane swap, you should always expect the dive. And that's why Yellowstar could recall, go down to the bottom lane, rain over, try to join as well, and prevent Huni from actually dying, just predicting what MYM was going to do from how they were handling the wave at level one. And that's why Steelback has been able to get a very early level six. Sewn away Mimo as well, just in the one on one lane. Get all the farm he needs, and now Mimo is just left on his own. This is going to be a tower. Once Fnatic want to kill it, let's see if they actually decide to let this tower take all the minions out. Then you finish it. So they have to wait now for the tower to clear everything. Otherwise, he's going to push all the way down to Mimo, and he's going to get a lot of farm. So Mimo, 9 CS to the 28 of Huni. Look at Horo on the bottom lane. 
This is round two. The tower is up and alive. Knockup doesn't connect. Nisbet tanks one more hit before backing away. Huni manages to survive, right, no as does Nisbet. Nisbet's still alive. The spell shield is there. Huni goes in. Flamespinner gets him one. That is a Huni pot. If ever I've seen one, Horo manages to connect. There's minions there to keep him alive. But that was once again another kill given over to Huni. Three to two. I mean, again, MYM really trying to shut down his rumble and he's just backfiring completely for them. Rallis just didn't have flash. He couldn't flash him for the last auto attack. So Huni managed to get away from him and in the end trade one for one while they got to push down his top wave. Maima did get all the farm though. The tower couldn't take out all the minions. So he at least is getting close to that level six point. But Huni, I mean, he's just been getting so much gold here. Honey guys already gonna get his sorcerer's boots next time he goes back, and this is gonna be a very early hourglass from him as well. It's gonna be some scary stuff in these mid-game team fights. Of the 2,000 gold lead that Fnatic have earned themselves, 1,000 of that is in Huni Zera. 2,900 gold to the 2,100 of his opposite number. We did see Mima picking up a bunch of CS as that wave pushed in his favor, but every single lane working out. We do see Rainover just a tad behind Horo. Thanks, of course, because of Horo's kill. Despite the fact that Horo botched those tower dives with the rest of MYM, all of the engage power in the world is not going to help you if you fall too far behind. Meet your makers cannot keep, cannot keep giving up or keep hemorrhaging gold against Fnatic. No, and especially not against Corky and Zero, if this mid game spike they're gonna have, if you can't engage on them, they will poke you so much that you're forced to recall and give up your obje objectives. You're gonna give up dragon towers, everything just through the poke coming down. And if you ever try and stay around, well, then Rengar is gonna find you and kill you as well. So, MYM really in a tough situation now through these failed dives onto Huni. Huni with the level advantage and item advantage forces. Mima to use that glacial path just to get out of danger. And now Fnatic, are they considering the dragon? No. Here comes a thrill of the hunt. Oro is in trouble. Level six, he's rooted. Light of the Arcane comes down. One, two, three, not even needed. The damage from Rainover and the combo from Febovic, yeah. that's their fourth kill of the game. We've seen this combo so many times from Fnatic. Rainover looks for one on one and he knows Febovic is in position to help him with his ulti from the mid lane here, and you just snipe it straight down. The target is already locked to the ground through the bowler strike, and obviously Febuvan assisting Reyno with that kill. Dragon as well now for Fnatic. This uh, one single playstyle they do have seems to again be paying off for them. Oh, they may set their sights on Quarry. Equalizer's available. Let's see what he does. Slow comes out. Dragon secured. Teleport, Teleport instantly from Mima. We see the accelerated shock blast coming out and Quarry's in trouble. Mima flashes forward. Frozen Tomb locks him down. Stun from Flippivan does not connect. Huni still in full retreat as the Equalizer forces MYM to back away. Huni goes 4-0. <laughs> he just doesn't want to die. He <laughs> does not want to go down without taking one with him. MYM seem to be trying to force some fights here. And Fnatic once again. There are more members. Everything under control. Tower as well is looking great for Fnatic at the moment. Very well played. Here's the replay of that mid lane dive. Yeah, so basically what MYM is hoping for here is that once the teleport comes in from Mimer, then you can claw and ulti straight on Huni before he actually gets too far away. Because then now suddenly you're going to get flanked by Febuvan. Yellow Star joining in as well, and you can keep following through the choke point of a Rumble ulti, and that's why that flash away and suddenly Mima is left on his own and ends up dying for it. So they're trying to get a quick pick on him, but the early flash from Huni meant that suddenly Fnatic could turn it around again. Hey, you got to give some praise to Huni as well. He didn't throw down that equalizer instantly in the mid lane. The fact that he held on to that, also the fact that he overheated, prevented him using it. But very good reaction from Fnatic to get the teleport out of Mima, to get themselves another kill. And now Huni's got the teleport advantage if he wants to continue applying pressure on the map. Level eight on Huni's rumble. Mima halfway through level eight, halfway towards level eight rather. But you can just see how far back he's playing in the lane. He's terrified of Huni. 
Remember, Fnatic, all this uh, magic damage. It's not going to matter if you don't even get to late game that the other team can just stack MR against you. Especially also because Abyssal Scepter is going to be delayed for Mimer. Lock it, obviously. I mean, there's going to be no global gold being picked up for either Horo or Nisbet for it to kind of rush that one. Meaning these mid-game team fights with a rumble this fit is going to go heavily in favor of Fnatic. And quietly, quietly, Steelback is farming away. Got himself 122 CS to the 99 of Mr. Riles. Two ingredients of the three required for that Trinity Force. Uni, Haunting Guys, and Sork Shoes. Very close to hitting level 10 and continues to just power up. Fnatic have decided they own MYM's jungle. MYM cannot pick a fight. Equalizer will melt literally anybody in there. Yep. So Fnatic got the towers, got the pressure, got the blue buff, got the Grom. It's, it's their game, it's their map. Yeah. And they are so good at playing around their own wards, always making sure there's an opening into the enemy jungle. We're going to go straight in and place a few wards, start looking for picks through Rainova and Febivan together, as we saw earlier already in this game. Horo is spotted on his red buffs, so I know exactly where he is at the moment. He's just going back to base, buy a few more items, buy a few more wards, and really look to now get complete control of the map itself. Suddenly, MYM. Gonna be in that situation where you can be too weak to engage, but you can't afford standing back either because you're just gonna get poked away from every single objective. And that's the worst situation where you have to rely on the other team making a mistake for you to come back. Well, let's take stock of the situation. 4,000 gold in the lead. Fnatic two towers to zero, three kills above their opponents, as well as having a dragon on the board. You look at the items, Trinity Force completed for Corky now. Morella Nomicon plus Sork Shoes for Febivin. Haunting guys in Sork Shoes for Huni. You know, you can't trust that. Rainover, thrill of the hunt is on. MYM will not be thrilled if anyone gets caught out. But this one fizzles. Rainover, not able to find a target. No, well, Corey cleared the wave and actually just back, back, uh, backed away to his turret. So, target for Rainover. Is it gone now? That should buy a little bit of time for MYM to at least not get picked off. But these lanes are still pushing in and. Fnatic is sitting in the jungle. I like though how MYM has actually reacted to it and placed a lot of defensive wards themselves to try and spot where Fnatic is going and use that to look for a mistake where maybe they can catch them out because again, they do have all this engage on their side. They have a lot of burst coming in, like a Graves, Lissandra, oh sorry, Jay's Lissandra combo. Can't take down a Tiger, so that's what they're looking for here. Hoping for Fnatic to overextend. And you know, something that Giants did against Fnatic last week was handle the rain over ganks and handle the rain over pressure relatively well, but they couldn't do it for the entire game. They could only do it during the laning phase. And as Rainover had more room to play with and had more opportunities to move around the map, then all of a sudden, Giants fell behind. Five members of Fnatic got themselves grouped up. Febivin was in range for Right of the Ocarina. Not even going to be needed because Meet Your Makers given up their outer turret. Backed away, and I think that was the wise decision. The risk of a gank or a fight would not have gone their way. No, and again, you're at the point where the Corky is just so much stronger than Sivir, and you can keep pushing in these lanes when you are controlling the jungle of the enemy team. So Fnatic using their lead really well, not allowing MYM to do anything, and Rallus now he might be in trouble. Let's take a look. The the hunt, not, not, available, not available yet for Rainover, so he's not going to have the ability to just hop in there with that extra movement speed, but Fnatic, they're pushing. Yeah, again, this is the mid-game siege they can do. You have already Morel Nomicon completed for Febivan. He has some magic penetration and Trinity Force for Steelback, so they can group up this early. And if MYM engages, well, the Fnatic is ready for it and should be strong enough to actually fight back. So a decent wave clear from MYM. Sandra, Jay, Siva will do a decent enough job at clearing that wave out. You can see the vision, Fnatic, Got some deep wards down for the top and bottom half of the map. This will be an uncontested dragon. It is number two. And they continue to accelerate their lead. Bonus tower damage, which will benefit them greatly if Fnatic want to play that siege game. If they want to push the they waves, do. get those inner turrets. Well, they should at least. If they're calm. And now again, as you said, second dragon. Just to have the perfect position for them. Let's see, Huni do uh, his standard distortion. 
very early on. He does it on nearly every top lane he plays for that teleport cooldown. And again, that's because Fnatic are always looking for these fights. So by having him get teleport ready before his counterpart, he can actually sit in a side lane and farm and then still be able to join in more often than not for these fights here. Because obviously he's rumble ulti with him being so far ahead of anyone basically with the four kills. He's going to be a big deal. Getting close to that level 11, you just saw him hit 10. Still got an advantage over Mima. Actually falling behind in CS. But you can forgive him for that. He's got four kills. Helped out with some dragons. And his ultimate alone will dissuade anyone from Meteor Makers for picking a fight. Fnatic, that very early advantage has fizzled just a little and slowed down. Because now they have to extend much further past those inner turrets. Got themselves another blue buff. I think they stole both. One previous, at least. Oh, that Corey. was close. Close. Yeah, you can't move anywhere. Everything is warded up by Fnatic. They can just slowly sit back on the side now. Okay, you got the two side lanes pushing. Febven is going to push in the mid lane, and then Steelback can join the team and even do a one four split push. You're going to see him move down the map or the river now to join Febven and the rest of Fnatic here to push in and land some fantastic poke. Let's see if MYM can actually look for a fight. Oh, or is it right now going Cat in? is hungry. He hops over the wall right to the Arcane, goes out. Third shot doesn't connect, but the Equalizer does. Now Corey's the focus. The rest of Fnatic are in range to put the damage down. Mr. Isles, Corey, Horo, full retreat. No one goes down, but where are the minions? Can Fnatic right get there. the tower? I think they can. There's a lot of damage to come out. Mimer's on the side player. here. Look at Mimer. He wants to try and go for the engage, but there's too many guys from MYM back in base. And that's why Fnatic can take another tower for themselves. When Leona has to use ulti to try and disengage, then you really know you're in trouble and you have no way of actually getting onto the back line of Fnatic itself. So Febben is going to feel so safe together with Steelback. This show, I do have to call you out a tad. I think they knew they were in trouble before Leona had to defensively so the play. You are probably correct. <laughs> but that's just me being a little bit mean. What's the goal difference? Over 5,000, nearly 6K. The fourth tower fallen in favor of Fnatic. And it just feels like everywhere Fnatic push, they are taking advantages. They have CS leads in every lane except top. Obviously, all of the global gold and the pushing powers in their favor, but you did see how effective Corey's wave clear was. One accelerated shock blast took out a lot of those minions. So if MYM can keep defending, they have some abilities to stall, but they've just got to be so, so careful. Yeah, so what they're trying to do now is trying to predict where Fnatic is on the map and get something elsewhere, and that's why they had this wave pushing in. All five run up there. Take that one tower, get some gold, recall instantly as well, because you know Fnatic is pushing either the bot lane or the mid lane. So I actually quite like that small trade from MYM, trying to get back in the game, get whatever Fnatic wants to give them. This tower, however, against five guys of Fnatic is not going to last long. I'm with ultimate teleporting up. behind. Let's see what he, he can has hope do. Card as well. Fnatic have got all of their abilities. Bro, that was a big, big miss. They did. If a ward times out, does your teleport cancel? Because that ward is no longer there. I may have cancelled that one. So, meet your makers. Wasted teleport. Mima does not manage to get in. And Fnatic continue the siege. Again, just using their comp really well here from Fnatic. Only problem is that Rengar doesn't really add anything at all in a siege. Especially because if you do get engaged on, you can't really use his pick potential. But the rest of the comp fits in nicely here for Fnatic. You can even, again, put down the Rumble ulti just behind the tower, and you're going to force MOM to back away from it. And that's what you can do when the tower is low enough for you to go ahead and finish it. And for now, they're trying to play a bit safe. They have the Dragon advantage. Next one is coming in about a minute. And whenever they see five guys from MYM, they decide to back away because they didn't have the mid or top lane really in a good position in terms of their minion waves. Well, thank you, observers in production. Taking a look at that. Ward did not time out. And even if it did, the teleport would cancel. So Mima, hearing the call from the team or making the decision himself, decides not to engage. Fnatic were, of course, breaking away from the lane. So maybe just not wanting to pick that fight in the jungle. Fnatic, they do not get the tower. They get a lot of damage, and they are the ones that have now backed away. So 40 seconds till the next dragon. Fnatic should be able to just set up some vision and basically bait MYM in. Unless Corey gets a good steal with 
an acceleration gate shock blast. I can't see MYM picking a fight against this incredibly fed and farmed Fnatic squad. No, and a lot of pink wards picked up as well, straight to the Baron here. Again, Fnatic is a team who's often, I'm gonna say, has shown the ability to snowball games. But then we saw them against Rocket here, where Rocket actually did a very good job defending, got to late game, and it was a lot harder for Fnatic to finish it. Finish it. But this time around, I mean, look at the vision on the map here. Pink wards, green wards, everything. It's a free Baron. Nothing MYM can do to stop it. They should actually go Dragon now and try and just... Uh, it's risky, but they could have tried to stay at the Dragon, kill it as soon as it spawns, and then recall. But then again, you would actually lose your tower here. Yeah. Oh, Mima gets silenced. This Fnatic yeah. take him out. I love that play from Fnatic because if MYM had the timer on Dragon and went to check it, it would have made it an even safer Baron for Fnatic. True. I mean, it's a very, very tough situation for MYM because staying in the mid lane obviously was not going to be the right call because either you're going to be in the in the top wave where the with minions are coming in and you can try and defend, or you try and get a Dragon and avoid that fifth Dragon coming up a bit in the future, but nearly an impossible situation for MYM. We're just going to see Rain over, getting onto Mimer, he's in the lane beforehand, and he's obviously left all on his own. That's brutal, that guys. Very brutal. That, that was, that was a, a very brutal replay, but it does end up resulting... All right, and they will actually get the Dragon anyway from MYM. This is good, get that 6%, and make sure Fnatic is not going to play around that fifth Dragon. So I like this play here by MYM. They're making some... But they're trying to make some plays to get back in the game, which is something we didn't see from them in the past why they would just basically sit back and say, we need you to, to make a mistake before we are going to do anything here. They are actually trying to play around Fnatic a little bit. Now they can use a base gate. Oh, Reynov has actually thrown down the ulti, looking for a target. Doesn't manage to find one. Take a look at your items really quickly. Huni sitting on that Leandris, has had a Seekers for a little while. Warmog's picked up by Reynova. Hourglass and another Rod for Febivin. And Corey, of course, has completed that Near a mana. Unfortunately, Mima from all of that early pressure and limited resources. Only a Morella Nomicon for his name. So this is going to allow Fnatic to use all of that damage to their favor. Tower secured. On the hunt comes down from Mr. Ross. Decent damage on Fnatic. They are going to get one. Huni is now out. Very good engage with the Frozen Tomb from Mima. And Corey's got a double. It's replied with Steelback. Boomerang goes out a two for one. Meet your makers get the kills, but they may not be able to defend this objective. They've used all of their abilities. Corey, can he get some poke down? He does. Mercury Hammer, does he want to throw it down? The answer is no. Fnatic lose the fight, get the objectives. They'll be happy with that. Yeah, but we did see at least the power of the MYM team fighting composition here. Once you get an engage in at least, took out two targets for themselves, but still so far behind the lost inhibitor. And we can just see, I mean, look at the players for MYM and their items. You can see someone like Horo here, he's going towards the locket. But he needs, like, just something on the way, because he's so far behind. So getting those early ruby crystals for some HP at least, magic resist, it's going to take him a long time before he sits on that locket in itself. And might be too late even. Because Fnatic are not looking to stop. They keep pressing the advantage. 25 minutes in, inhibitor is gone. Baron has already been picked up as well from Fnatic. Very decisive play, once again, from Fnatic. Once they have a lead, they push an objective, and they really do commit to it. Um, yes, in their game against Unicorns of Love, it may have cost them. You can argue from bad calls or bad execution, but in this matchup against Meet Your Makers, they have punished the MYM tower dives. Thanks to the power that Huni earned himself, it has allowed Fnatic to push down the towers yeah. or the dragons mostly uncontested, and that's why they continue to dominate the map and dominate the control. MYM came into this game saying, we have to make plays early on. We can't just sit back and be passive any longer. That's not going to win us any games. We're going to try and make some plays. In this game, it backfired for them. That's why Fnatic is currently winning it. But at least, it's again, it's a difference. You need to try and snowball the early game when you know you don't have the same communication or synergy as the team you're facing. And this is a nice engage from Nisbet. Solar Flare comes out. Febivin manages to get away. Mikhail's Crucible's been used. Rainover hops onto Horo and he hops over the wall. Right to the Arcane goes out. I think that was three for three, but not on the same target. So MYM forced to retreat. Mimer's low, still has his ultimate. Does have teleport as well. Where are the wards? Not a lot of deep vision, so flanking opportunities are lower. And for Fnatic, 
No Zerath ultimate. Rumble still got his. If a fight were to break out, but he would need to teleport. Who needs pushing the top lane? Also have to worry about the Nexus here. Super Minion's already pushing onto it, trying to take down a tower. While Fnatic might be caught out. So Rain over Zerath, the first one. Focus down from Meet Your Makers. The Nexus is being hammered on in the backline. Horo will get dropped as Fnatic continue to put the damage down. Teleports from both top laners. Never been charges up that Arcano Pulse. The minions have been pushed back for the time being. Fnatic trade junglers, but get an inner turret. They're going to be able to back away. A little bit awkward, but I think Fnatic again, they get the buff, they get the damage, and they get another kill on the board. It's all about the towers here for Fnatic. They don't even mind trading a one for one in these fights. As long as you keep opening up the base, Baron is now 130. Look for them to do exactly the same as before. You even see them pick up four pink wards here. Go straight down to this Baron. You already have actually the ones from before. Place a few more wards, wait for it to spawn, take it, and push down once again to the base of MYM. And honestly, we're gonna have to see the perfect team fights Four medium makers if they want to get back in this game. They've been trying. Yeah. And, and for these engages it's gotten here. better. It's gotten better. Once they've got a few more items, you know, on the inhibitor, they managed to come out ahead two for one. They did trade one for one. Horo's been caught out. Yellow Star's going to knock him up. The flag, the drag. Nisbet jumps in. Rainover lands the baller. Horo is down. Double kill for Rainover as he just flies through the air. Mima, glacial path away to safety. 50 seconds for Baron. Two members of Meteor Makers down. Fnatic once again finding the picks, once again finding their targets. Once again, Reynova looking great on Rengar, despite having no help from the team in terms of speeding him up. Still finding the picks every single time. And this Baron is going to belong to Fnatic. No questions about that at all. And we touched on the synergy between Huni and Reynova during picks and bans. We touched on how well they're performing. Steal back 2-0-1. So Fisher, you were touching on, you know, the lane swaps and exactly where Steelback fits into the grand scheme of things. You can't deny that with the other carries on Fnatic, he is doing what is required. That's the thing. I really like the way to use yep. Again, he's new to the LCS. He's a young guy. You make sure he doesn't get the carry roll instantly and just say, hey, here's a hyper carry. We're just going to rely on you now in late game. No, they let him play the champions he wants to, then make sure he plays the style he likes as well, and he's not the main carrier of Fnatic, but he's, he doesn't have to. Yeah. He's a good AD carry, he's doing his job every single game, and picking a Corky, use the mid game, that's all that's required of you. Let's see what happens. Does the Kit Cat want to pounce? Fnatic waiting on the move speed. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, jump onto Twitter. This could be an LCS big play waiting to happen. Thrill of the Hunt is out. There goes Rengar. He's jumped on Mima. Mima forced a frozen tomb. Equalizer comes out and Mima is down. We do see the baller strike go out, but Corey manages to get away thanks to the movement speed. And Fnatic find themselves a kill using the Scuttle Crab and setting themselves up for more. <laughs> right, they just keep baiting this one. They don't want to start the Baron, hoping for more kills before, and now they will be able to get it. Leading into that gank, Febevin had the license to kill. Zero kills, zero deaths, seven assists. Now he's on the board at 107. Fnatic realize no one's coming to contest. Mr. Roll's down in the bottom lane. They get their second Baron of the game. Gonna recall, spend some money, and look to put those final nails into the coffin against future makers. Yeah. And uh, Mimer here and this is Sandra. We like the pick. He's just been set so far behind compared to Huni. After the swap here, he's trying to get this hourglass, obviously, which you need to dive onto the back line of Fnatic. And what we actually have seen, not in Europe, but what I know a lot of the Korean Lissandra players will do if they have a bad start, is you just go for the Codex and your Lucidity boot, so you get that the same amount of cooldown reduction, or you get a lot of cooldown reduction, and then you actually get hourglass before you complete a Morello Nomicon. And if you have, again, an Abyssal Scepter, which is going to be a key item for you, you can even take that one before complete Morello Normicon, just because you need those defensive stats and need them earlier than you normally would. Because, again, your combo is all about diving onto the enemy team, and if you are falling behind, well, it's not going to work for you. So Mima, once again, looking for a flank. He's tried it a few times before. It's not been the greatest. When Fnatic had the previous Baron, they sieged up and they got the turret and the inhibitor. 
Here comes Rainover once again. He lands with the skill shot. Rainover very, very seldom misses that one. And you have to question how do teams play against Rainover and Fnatic when they are on form? Yeah, but it goes down right to the Ukraine, comes out. One misses. Let's wait. Where's the rest, Febovin? I'm not coming. He, he farmed with him. He farmed with him. I just get excited because of the double kill he picked up a few weeks ago. Yeah. So he's been the European sniper for sure whenever he plays Zerif. And this game again, picked up a lot of assists, but he's been there with his ultis. Every time Reyno would lock down a target, Febovin was there to assist him. Now pushing on to this turret here, mid inhibitor, it's already gone. Fnatic taking it very low. Equalizer's available. TP Mimer's coming now. in from be the behind. Engage. Zenith Blade does not connect. Solar Flare catches Rainover. Mimer's looking for a target. Forced to self-cast to stay alive. Frost Bomb from Steelback is going to take Mimer down as the reply is on to Yellowstar. Now Nisbet forced on the retreat. Steelback is carrying for the team from the back line. Fnatic have got three despite losing two, and with the Empowered Minions, they're gonna get a second inhibitor. They have Super Minions on the Nexus as well here. Rallis is trying to defend it. Fnatic, gonna win the game yet. Well, let's see what Corey can do. He's flashed for this one. He's gonna get the Shock Blast out. Swatch to Mercury Hammer if he wants to, decides against it. The risk of a Shocking Orb stun means that Corey, looking for more than he can achieve. But Fnatic haven't won the game yet. They've got all the tools to do it. Here's a replay. Yeah, so Telewa coming in from Mayama here. Nisbet, where's his ulti? He actually first misses Seventh Blade, and then ulti only onto Rainover. So Fnatic managed to disengage early hour last Febben as well. And also we need to remember Mikhail's was picked up by Yellowstar earlier. So no coordination really to try and lock down a few targets from the engage missing uh, through Nisbet and obviously Mayama not being able to find the target, meaning that Fnatic can take another team fight. And such a great equalizer from Hooney, completely splitting that bottom lane in half. You have to cross that ability to either fight or to retreat and then still flashing forward flame spit in Hourglass. So well played by Hooney. 5-3-6. If Mimer had not been shut down so much so early and had an Hourglass, maybe you know could have caught somebody and survived the tad longer. But unfortunately when you're 11k gold down, you don't have the luxury of minor misplays. No, and I mean, it's been a tough game from MOM. I, ever since that lane swap failed for them, it's basically been in favor of Fnatic. And they have not allowed MOM to do anything on the map itself. Two towers are down only. One of them obviously went down through lane swap itself. And you know, talking about that lane swap and the tower dive, there are reasons that tower dives are so much less frequent in the early game, and it's because of just how much more damage those towers put out. You referenced the Rumble tower dives from NA last week, and again, just MYM not synchronizing correctly, and also Yellowstar having the damage shield and the exhaust also playing into their favor. You can't disregard that. So it's harder to pull off the tower dives, but if you time it correctly, you can still do it. And that was a problem for MYM. They took a long jungle route, so Huni got level three, before anything happened, and Yellowstar had time to recall from the top lane, come down and help him as well. And MYM still went for the dive, uh, instead of saying, okay, abort, we can still back out here before anything happens. And that's really what set them behind. Rainover, <laughs> Rainover jumps the tower. onto Have the tower, dive. gets the damage out. Equalizer is out on the back line. Everybody going low. Uh, we see the hourglass pop from Huni. Rainover is dropped. Nietzsche Makers holding on. Super Minions pushing in. That little engage not working out in favor of Fnatic. However, Febovin's going to even it up. One for one. Top laner down from Meet Your Makers, despite the heavy engage. And a small glimmer of hope from Meet Your Makers, but it's just too little. We do see Mr. Rolls putting damage down. They've caught Febovin. He's forced to Hourglass. Steelback untouched with so much damage. There's Super Minions on the Nexus Toad. Steelback is going to Valkyrie away. Now the Interpretator is being focused down. Corey gets hit. Fast bomb chunks him out. Huni teleports. The Triple fight's kill. been so long that he's come back from the pit. And we do see him here, taking out Super Minions on the Nexus turrets. That's going to be the win for Fnatic. Once again, a very, very dominant performance here from Fnatic. Taking another win. SK Gaming is not secured number one yet. 7 0 4 from Steelback. Huni 5 3 and 8. And Fnatic never looked challenged.
massive smiles on the faces of everybody. It's a fair bit. Pretty, pretty focused look there as he steps up. And it's, it's, it's difficult to fold the performance. Again, oh, yeah. they punish the dive and then again push the objectives and move around the map very effectively. Punish the dive, go back to top lane as well, make sure that Mimer lost at least some of the wave up there. We saw Rainover come up and then after the lane swap, again being in favor of, of Fnatic, they just managed to get all these picks going. You see the roaming again from Yellowstar joining in for the early fights. MYM tried to make some plays which is better than what we have seen beforehand, where they would sit back and be very afraid to do anything. Here they're actually trying. A Fnatic had just read them like a book, were able to respond every single time, get a massive goal lead, and obviously also be able to use that mid-game spike on a Zerif and a Corki to siege down these turrets. Yeah, and despite being 10, 12,000 gold down, the fights were not as convincing as Fnatic may have wanted. There was a lot of CC and a lot of damage that Meteor Makers were putting down. Corey ended that game 4-1-2. and two. His Jace, Acceleration Blast, Shock Blast, Poke was on point. It hit the target. Sure. But unfortunately, you know, everybody else fell too far behind. It's, it, it just it didn't work out. Uh, there are too many key items MOM were missing for most of the fights because they fell so far behind. The Locket came in for the last team fight. Our last was completed as well in the last team fight. We saw where MOM actually picked up a few kills. But then because Super Minions were pushing in, they had to go back and it was a bit of a split up and suddenly Fnatic could clean up kills, triple kill for steel back in that fight as well. But these key items, I mean, it is in that situation where if you are playing Lissandra and you know that Outlast is so important for you to win team fights and you are being starved from gold, that's why, you, honestly, you have to try and change up your build. Go for that yeah. Codex into cooldown reduction boots, get the 30% cooldown reduction. That way through obviously the masteries as well. And then just go straight Outlast. Try and get it for these mid-game fights. If it doesn't work for you, I mean, at least you tried. In this case, for, for Mimer, it came in too late. He couldn't really do too much otherwise because he just fell so far behind compared to Huni. And it's sad as well. You look at the preparation Meet Makers had coming into this game. Their picks and bans seemed sound. Um, they had a team comp that had the ability to do well. And you know, we've, I know we've hopped on about the tower dive a lot, but it really is what defined this game. If Meet Your Makers had been a little smarter, a little better at executing it, the game could have gone so different. True. Um, unfortunately for them, it doesn't pay off. So we need to just see them go back to the drawing board, go and maybe practice the coordination, practice what went wrong in that dive or the decision-making leading up to it. And then we can see the same game again in a few weeks' time without giving your opponent exactly. four kills before 10 minutes. Yeah, it's very easy for MYM to look at this game and say, okay, here we made the mistakes. Yeah. And also maybe say Rumble is one of the hardest top laners to dive. So maybe next time you just freeze the wave instead against him and try and deny him farm play yeah. a bit of a slow and safe lane swap instead of going for the dive onto him with four guys. So there's a lot of things they can look at here and try and fix for, for next week. Yeah, we'll need to see how...